Hi gorgeous girls, guess what we're going to talk about today? <laughs> I'm going to be really brave, I've wanted to talk about this for a while, we are going to talk about poo. <laughs> what you need to know about your poo. <laughs> I'm going to deal with this, not head on, but bottom on. We're going to deal with poo. Shape, texture, colour, smell, what makes a healthy poo. This is stuff that you need to know. Now, obviously, being British, we're a bit reticent about talking about poo, but we have to do it. We have to know what's going on with our bodies. And I felt a little bit nervous talking about this, but I'm a Pilates teacher. I talk about pelvic floor all day. So I'm going to branch out into the question of poo. Well, you know my own personal adventure on prebiotics and probiotics the last few months. Well, I've been on a pre and a probiotic adventure with my own homemade kefir. You saw that last week. Hi, Nick. <laughs> but I also learned lots and lots about how my bowel movement was being affected by the prebiotics and the probiotics. And I found out that I wasn't actually blowing off enough. Who knew? <laughs> So what does your poo say about you? Now, your poo, if it dives straight to the bottom of the toilet pan, then that means there are some food particles in there that are undigested and you are not absorbing the nutrients. And that's why probiotics are so good for you because they help you to redigest that food. Okay, if there's little bubbles in your poo, I'm sorry, I know this is delicate. <laughs> the little bubbles in your poo and it hangs around for a while, brilliant. <laughs> that means that there's lots of air and digestion that's gone on and that's a healthy poo. Fabulous. Did you know that there was a scale of poos? <laughs> Did you? Yeah, there's a scale of type one to type seven. And you're on for a winner if you get a type three or a four. Let me describe in detail the different types of poo. <laughs> you're going to love it. So type one, if you've got really separate, hard little lumps, like rabbit droppings, then that shows, guess what? Yes, you are dehydrated. Okay, a little bit of an effort. <laughs> Did you like that? Little bit of an effort passing that kind of poo, little rabbit droppings, you are dehydrated. And it's taking in your body over a hundred hours to digest that through your system. So it's not good. You need more water. Type two is a sausage poo, but it's a bit lumpy. So it's still dehydrated. And type three, can't believe I'm discussing this. <laughs> Type three is a sausage-like poo, but with lots of cracks on it. So again, you're not really hydrated. Now type four, bingo, jackpot. You've got it if you've got a smooth sausage poo. Fabulous, that is ideal. You can run around the house shouting Eureka. <laughs> now type five is like little soft blobs. And they're really, they're like torn blobs. And that could... That could be a slight food intolerance, so if you get it quite quickly. Things like coffee. Coffee really hits the bowels going, doesn't it? And sometimes it can produce a poo like that. So that's good to know. It's good to guide you in what you're eating. Now type six, real fluffy pieces of poo with really ragged edges. That's not good either. That shows that the process is too quick. It's going through your system too quick and you're not picking up the nutrients that you need. Okay, good to know. Now type seven, so you're going right down the other side of the scale, watery. So you can imagine that a watery poo is not good. It means that it's been in your body for about 10 hours and there's been no absorption or very, very little absorption. So it's not good. So on the Bristol stool scale, that means poo scale, they're one to seven, you're looking for an ideal poo of number four, sausage. Okay, happy with that? Can I move on? 
Now I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you can poo more. Some of us don't poo enough. What would you consider um, a good day? How many poos would you have in a good day? Seven? No, that's extreme. <laughs> Two? Pretty good. One is generally average, but if you're doing quite a lot of exercise or you're eating a lot of fiber, then you're gonna boot poo quite a lot more, okay? Don't forget to like and share if you're enjoying this conversation. <laughs> so, what helps you to poo more? Exercise. The more you exercise, the more you get out there, outside, enjoying the fresh air, the more you're gonna stimulate your gut and your digestive system. It doesn't have to be hard and fast hit workouts. Gentle exercise will help to stimulate your bowels. You know that. And the wonderful thing about women and especially menopausal women is we want to get out there in nature. That's really going to help calm you on so many levels. OK, so go out, exercise, go for a walk right now. The other thing you want to do is fibre. We all know about fibre. We all know we should be eating it. But I'm not suggesting um, grains or anything like that. What about vegetables and fruit? There are two types of fiber. There's insoluble fiber, like the skin on fruit, and there is soluble fiber, like the insides of the fruit. Now, insoluble fiber, the skin, is really good because it bashes down through the um, digestive system and it promotes movement, and then it's dispersed. That's a good word, dispersed, pooed out. <laughs> insoluble fiber, so it's quite good. Soluble fiber, is much better. It helps the prebiotic and the probiotic system chain reaction down through your body and disperses again. But what's really good about things like plums, always known that plums are good for your bowels, but they actually attract more water from your system into your guts. So that's really good for stimulating and creating more water in your digestive system. And as you've learned from the Bristol School um, scale, you need water to help move that digestion and make the poos perfect. <laughs> okay. The other thing you need is water. You have know my water challenge. You know how important water is for your body for so many reasons, but also for helping you to poo more. The other thing you need to do is be regular. Now, your gut and your bowels are amazing. They are really amazing. They have their own kind of sensory system, their brain system. They call it the gut brain. Fabulous, really exciting. And what that means is it is stimulated at the same time every day. It has its own sensor. So if for some reason you cannot participate at the appropriate time, like if you have to rush off in the morning to go um, to a meeting, a breakfast meeting, and you're not giving your body the correct time that it knows to poo, then you are moving your system out of its regular cycle and it ain't going to be happy. So, my words of advice, wait, <laughs> go regularly and then carry on with your day because your system appreciates you being regular, regular time of day, okay? Got over that one. Prebiotics. Now I spent loads of time last week talking about pre and probiotics. So if you visit my blogs, get-gorgeous.com forward slash blogs, you'll see everything you need to know about prebiotics and probiotics. Prebiotics are the fibre that feed the probiotics. And probiotics, which you get from food, really help your digestion and they help you to poo more easily. <laughs> Coffee. Well, I talked about this very briefly. Everybody's different. Everybody's gut bacteria is different. But for most of us, and if you're a runner, you'll know this, quick release before you do your half marathons, cup of coffee does the treat. <laughs> and then finally, this is a bit scary. In my world, in the runner's world, there's, um, we need to sort of evacuate before a run because the last thing you want to do on a race is pulling over to one side. It's not good. 
So you could do a gentle massage of your perineum if you're so inclined, which means the bit from your front bottom to your back bottom could do with a little massage and you will have instant release. I'm moving on. <laughs> I can't do that anymore. I need to talk to you about the correct posture for pooing. What? Yes, there is a correct posture for pooing. And it is not the upright Victorian imagery that you might have, no. It is actually very, very different. Now, I've given you a link in the blog to the Squatty Potty. It is hilarious. It's all about a unicorn and how it poos properly. It uses really fun phrases like unicorn hemorrhoids are like the glitter goes everywhere. <laughs> and if you can't get the last scoop out of the carton, hilarious, really, really funny. And it talks about a product that you can buy that helps you to sit properly on the loo. It's funny, it's hilarious, it's worth a view, but there is something you can do that's much more simple. Rather than sitting upright on the toilet, lean forward. There is, in your bowels, a kinky rectal closure, which means there's a little kink in your bowels. And if you tip forward, that kink uncurls. You also need to lift your feet. So if you've got kids around the house and they're still potty training, those little steps, use those steps to put your feet on and that will bring your knees just above your hips. Lean forward, knees up on a little pedestal, perfect. You don't need to buy a squatty potty, you can do it at home in your own way. It will make a difference. This little, little kink in your bowels is there very naturally. Um, and if you're leaning forward in a squat position, then it will make things unkink and everything will come to fruition. <laughs> I'm going to talk about these two sphincter muscles in your bowels as well, which is really important. There's one that's unconscious, that's quite deep, that just talks to the brain. And there's another one that you have control over. So, for instance, if you're in a Pilates class and you need to fart you have this muscle that will stop it from coming. And that will send a message to the other sphincter muscle and everything will close down for you. If you do that too often, those messages between those muscles break down. So the advice is, if you want to blow off in Pilates or wherever you are, go for it. <laughs> You want that message to come through quite clearly. So before I leave this delicate subject of pooing and what you need to know about your poo, shape, texture, colour, what makes a healthy poo, which we've discussed, I need to talk to you about poo puri. This is hilarious. It is a product you can buy. You spray it in your loo bowl and no smell comes into the house. What an ingenious product. <laughs> So on that, I'm going to leave you. Have a healthy poo and I will see you soon. Bye.